In this video, I'm going to be showing you my top five favorite pieces of hydro dipping equipment here in my professional hydro dipping shop. Stick around. We're going to talk all about them and show you each one individually. So here on YouTube and my other social media platforms, I get asked a ton of questions about what kind of equipment that I use. So in today's video, I'm going to show you my top five favorites that I have here in my shop but make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I've got more top five videos coming up soon. We're gonna do some top five films that I use. We're gonna be taking a closer look at some of the equipment that I've built myself to use here in the shop and tons of other really cool tips and tricks for you guys. But that's all coming up in the future. Let's get into this video. So first up is gonna be my hydro dipping tank. And as you can see, this thing is massive. So my tank is made by TWN Industries. It's one of their larger size tanks. It measures just over 10 foot long and it's about five foot wide. Now I've got the cover on it right now and I've got a video on how I built this cover. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link to it right here. But I keep the cover on it most of the time when I'm not using it because the water inside is heated to 90 degrees and the cover helps keeps it from you know evaporating and losing some of that heat all the time because this thing's always running. We'll cover a lot more about tank construction in a future video, but my tank already came exactly how it is and it works very simply. You get a sump over here with a pump in it. The pump actually pushes water over into the dipping area, which is this section here. After you get done dipping, I'll use the control panel to start the pump and it will push the water up over here and actually clean the film and all the nasty stuff off the top of the water over into the next section we're gonna look at. And that section is going to be the filter. So basically this is an overflow. The water flows from the dipping area over to here. This filter captures a lot of the old nasty you know film and junk and then filters the water back through over to the pump into the sump and then it repeats that cycle all the time now my tank came with this large divider that works in the middle i can slide this back and forth to reduce or expand my dipping area and it also came with several different sizes of dams that are pre-made and they have hooks on the end so that you can grab the middle divider and pull it in to whatever size i need and then i can adjust these as small or as big as I need, depending on which size film I'm dipping. So my tank has a total of three control panels. This is the main panel. You've got two PID controllers and amp meters that control the two different heating elements that are inside the tank. There's one in the main dipping area, and then there's also one over in the sump. It also has a built-in timer right over here that I can access from the quick access panel over here, and that helps me time how long I have water on the film and how long I'll let the activator sit on the film after I get done activating. But with this being a larger and more commercial sized tank, this thing pulls some massive power. This thing has two 100 amp heating elements, so this thing pulls a total of 200 amps just for the two heating elements when it's running. Then on this quick access panel on the front of the tank, this is the one I use most often when I'm just in here dipping. I have a button to stop and start the pump so that I can clear the top of the water off. I have a stop and start and a reset button for my timer, and then this is for the automated control arm. And this thing right up here is my automated control dipping arm. I honestly very rarely use it but what it's for is so that you can make a jig and put really big heavy items on it and it's based on hydraulics and it'll lower this thing down into the water dip it for you and then pull it right back up very nice addition to have to a really big commercial size dipping tank but i very rarely use it and then over here is the other control panel and this one is specifically for the dipping arm that we just looked at so this tank holds over a thousand gallons of water when it's completely full and running you just have to change the water about every two weeks and have to really deep clean the tank once a month if you're interested in seeing how i clean the tank i've got a link to a video that we did right up here but overall i absolutely love my dipping tank it's one of the best investments i made for my business they are extremely expensive to buy this size and commercial grade like this but it was well well worth the money spent piece of equipment number two of my favorite hydro dipping equipment is going to be my rinse tank let me pull this cover off real quick and we'll take a closer look at it now this rinse tank i actually built myself it started out as a 300 gallon stock tank you can buy these at like tractor supply and places like that but it's a rubber made products 300 gallon stock tank we're going to go into a lot more detail about how i actually built this thing in a future video when we talk about rinsing and rinse tanks but just a general overview, it's got a quarter horsepower pump. It has a total of 20 spray nozzles that go in a bunch of different directions. I also plumbed in a hose with a spray nozzle on it so I can spray some of the bigger parts or if I need to clean this thing out, I can use it for that. I have it hooked up to a PID controller with a in-tank temperature sensor that can heat the tank whenever I need it to because sometimes here in Georgia in the wintertime, it'll get really cold and the water will be down in the 50s. So I like to heat it up to about 70, 75 degrees when I'm rinsing. I built my own wooden stand with rollers on it so I can move this thing in and out of the shop and get it out of the way whenever I need it to. And I included a drain valve on the backside so that I can roll this thing outside, 
drain all the nasty water out of it every couple of weeks and then fill it back up with fresh water. And it's also where I keep my wet floor sign because it does get wet around here and you never know when there might be ninjas that need to break dance. Now this thing is not a complete circle. It's, it's kind of short on the side, so it's six feet by about five feet, which is perfect for everything that I need. Not very often, but sometimes I do get parts that are too long or too wide to fit in this wrench tank. So what I'll do is I'll put whatever part I can in to say it's like a really long car bumper. I'll lay it in kind of at an angle, rinse off one side and then flip it around and rinse the other side. But my favorite part about my rinse tank is that it's just super easy. I get done dipping something, throw it in here, turn it on, and it rinses it all by itself. I don't have to stand here and watch it, just let it go for five to 10 minutes and then hang the parts up to dry. The next piece of equipment is going to be my sand blaster. If you have watched the channel before, you've seen me use this thing a ton. I absolutely love this thing. So what I use this thing for is that everything that comes in the shop has to be prepped before it can be painted and then dipped. Using the sand blaster gives me a perfect profile for paint to stick to and keeps me from having to do any hand sanding or hand scuffing at all, which saves me a ton of time. Now the blaster that I have is a scat blast model 985. It's a little over six feet long. It's about 30 something inches deep and about 30 something inches tall. It's one of their bigger models. Not cheap by any means. These things are very, very expensive, but it's well worth it for me cost wise because I have so much stuff to prep. This thing cuts down on our prep time a ton. Because this thing is so wide, it has two stations and two windows. So you can use this thing from either side so that you can get to both ends of a really long part. It's foot pedal operated, which is a lot more comfortable than having to squeeze a trigger all the time. It has two LED lights on the inside to keep it nice and bright. And then it has a two stage filtration system. Air comes out from the sand blaster and goes into this little cone and it vortex spins it around all really cool, drops the big particles down into the bottom and leaves a lot less media actually in the airstream before it goes into the final vacuuming system. And in the bigger vacuuming system you see in the back, which is the big black hand, that is what has an actual air filter in it. It pumps the air from the inside of the dust separator to the outside of the building. And I get asked this question all the time and it doesn't matter how many times I answer it, 15 more people ask me. The media that I use in this sand blaster is aluminum oxide or red garnet. One of the two, whichever one I can get locally and they're 100 or 120 mesh. Number four is going to be my paint mixing cabinet. This is a Dito's brand paint mixing cabinet. I have no idea how many paint cans of paint this thing will hold. It holds a ton, but I really like this thing because over the years I've accumulated so many gallons and quarts of paint and I don't use them all, all the time, but it's really nice because I've got all my paint all in one little area and all my quarts and gallons have a paint mixer built into them. So all I do is hit the button and it starts agitating the paint up so it's ready to go. Now this thing is massive. It's like eight and a half feet long and I have nowhere near enough paint to fill this entire thing with just quarts and gallons where I can have them mixing all the time. So I also use it for paint storage for my quart size cans when they're full and I haven't opened them yet and I use it for my aerosol cans to store over here as well. Now the way this thing works is you put one of these special Dito's lids on top of the paint. Each lid has a handle so you can grab it and then it has a gear up here on top. This gear fits into these little slots and you just let it sit there and then it has paddles inside that will turn and agitate the paint. Then after the paint's mixed up and you're ready to use it, you grab it by the handle. It's got a little spring loaded latch right here. You just use this, dump your paint out and then when you're done, stick it back up on the shelf. And a lot like some of the other equipment that we've looked at today, the paint mixer itself is not cheap and neither are the lids. But unfortunately, when you get into business and you need to be able to work faster, things like this that make life easier and faster cost money. Number five, and last but certainly not least of my favorite pieces of equipment I have is going to be my two activator guns. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you've probably seen me use one or both of these at some point in time in one of our videos. And I love both of them equally. They just each have their own specific purpose. This one right here is my main activator gun that I use for most all films. This is a DeVilbus GPI. I got this on a recommendation from Jim over at K2 Concepts. This is one of the best activator guns I have ever used. It sprays activator like nothing out there on the market. I absolutely love it. It was a great investment. Now they're not cheap. These things are like over $500, but is a great activator gun and solved a lot of my activator issues I had when I was first starting out. On this gun, I run a 1.8 tip, and if you buy these from K2 Concepts, you'll get an instruction manual that shows you how to set them up, but I've got it set up exactly how it is in the instruction manual, and I run my pressure anywhere between about seven and eight PSI. My other favorite activator gun is actually not an activator gun at all. It's actually a pressure pot system. If you're not real familiar with pressure pots, basically the way they work is this little pot down here, it holds all of your activator, an air pressure line comes in, it runs at about 60 PSI, it pressurizes the tank and then it actually pushes only activator out of this gun here at the end. So when I use it, it's not blowing overspray all over the place. It's only activator coming out. I use this more for my production style stuff when I'm doing a lot of the same thing over and over and over. It has a little bit of a learning curve and it's, it's not something for a beginner to use, but it is definitely my other favorite activator gun and I use it every chance I get. 
This one also not cheap. It comes from Big Brain Graphics. These things are over two grand, but like I mentioned earlier, when you're in business, stuff costs money. Just part of it. And we're gonna cover more beginner and DIY style equipment in a later video, but I get asked so many questions about the equipment that I use here in my shop, so I wanted to give you guys a quick look at my top five favorites. If you like what you saw today, make sure you hit that thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do so. I've got a bunch more of these top five type videos that I wanna do in the very, very near future because everybody seems to really like them. And then of course we have our bi-weekly tips and tricks videos and our regular project series videos. Let's roll the bloopers. And because this thing is so wide, it has, it has, uh, it has, I was about to tell you how, how many nozzles it has, and I don't even know, I ain't count them. One, two, three, four, five. In this video, I'm going to be telling, <clears throat> of course, I'm trying to stay clean, and I'm getting junk all over my freaking hands. I and it's really not even an activator gun at all. At it at it all. At it at all. At at all. Control operated so it comes the air so that it has a land a landle. We're gonna look at a little bit more of my equipment that I've some of the we're gonna take a little bit more we're gonna be taking a, a especially like car bumpers and like bed truck or Bed trucks. Bed trucks. All trucks have beds, duh. That gear turns on this little belt conveyor built system that's really freaking cool. Did I say conveyor built? Con what is a conveyor built? I don't know. Four on my favorite pieces of equipment in my shop. I don't know what the hell I was trying to say. Because it's so wide, it has... Uh, it, it has the... What's the army thingies? What am I... Gloves? No, they're not gloves. They're only gloves that go over your hand. Are they gloves if you go up to your I don't know what the hell they are. In this video, I'm going to be tell, talk, talking or telling. Pick one. Talk. You can't say talk, tell, to tell all at the same time. 